Okay, I simply show you. So the, so the theorem of Posner, the original version, is that if R is prime, prime ring satisfying a polynomial identities over its centroid, then this is if and only if uh, um, there exists a matrix algebra over a division. So D is a finitely dimensional uh, over the center, over its center division algebra. Algebra with the property that R is a left and a right order of M and D. So this more or less gives the answer about what the prime ideals, sorry, the prime P algebras are. The, the, the answer is more or less they are as bad as the prime commutative rings. Because you take, for example, the matrix algebra over some division algebra which is fine dimension over its center, you take some elements which form a basis of this algebra over D, you generate an algebra, then this algebra has no zero, so more or less under some conditions this algebra will have, no, um, 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 this will be um, very probably prime, and you get in this way, for example, if you take n to be 1 and you take only subrings of the field of D, then you get uh, what you want. So, I think that more or less this form of the theorem or this form they show that prime PI rings they are from one side good enough because if you take the center you get already uh, matrices over a field, over a division algebra. But nevertheless uh, they can be as bad as uh, prime uh, commutative ring. So I, I don't know whether I answered your question, but at least I try to. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, we forget about structure theory. In some sense, I think that I'm feeling better now. <laughs> And I want to, to discuss something which is related with the birth side problem in group theory. So the problem of birth side okay, I write problems is in plural. Because there are several, more or less related. This was asked in 1902. Is the following: We have that the group G is finitely generated. So the first question: This is if. For each g of g, there exists an n such that g in power n equals 1. So g, the elements of g are finite order, but the order may depend on, uh, on the element of the group. Doesn't imply that the group is finite. The second question was if there exists an n bigger than zero, such that 
g in power n equals 1 for all g in g doesn't imply that g is finite. And finally, if we know that for fixed n and d, the, the group g is degenerated, generated by d elements and of exponent n is there a bound okay there is this a bound for the order of g so the first question of course this is you know that the group is finitely generated you know that each element is a finite order and you ask whether the group is finite or not. The answer of this, to this question, this is no. The first contraexample was given in 1964, I think, 1964 by Govot. And his construction used some ring theoretic construction, so using ring theory and this was the result of Gold and Shefarevich. Now there are better constructions and easier constructions directly in group theory. Mm. For example, there is a nice construction um, by Grigorchuk, given about 20 years ago, or even more. The answer to the next question, in the general case, the answer is also no. For n odd and n big enough, it was done by Adyan. Sorry, I think Novikov and Adyan. I don't know how you spell. It. Sometimes you spell in this way, sometimes you spell with y. And maybe n was several hundred. And for some, even for some small n, this is not known. For example, n equals 5, the answer is unknown. And for the third question, you may ask why it is interesting, because you know that you have a bounded number of, um, of generators, you have, a, you have a bounded number, you have a bound of, for the exponent, and the question is whether if you know already that the group is finite, how to bound it order? The answer is that if the answer is yes, then all in degenerated finite groups, finite groups of exponent n are homomorphic images of one of such group of one of them. So there is some group which is a finite exponent n with de degenerators such that all finite groups with this property they are its homomorphic images. And you know of course here the answer was given by Zelmanov somewhere in the early 90s. And I think it was the second time in the history when somebody got a Fields Medal for group theory. The first, the first one, I think, was Thompson for the work on simple groups, and it was the second time. So this is something which is not, more, not too much related with the topic, but at least it gives you some idea how group theory inspires problem for ring theory. And Kurosh in 1941 asked a similar problem for rings. So um, his problems were the following. Here you have that R is a finitely generated algebra over a field. 
I asked this for the case of algebras, you can ask also for uh, rings in the, in the corresponding way. And you know that, um, so how to replace the first condition, that for each element you have two possibilities, either to say that the element, the element is new or to say that the element is algebraic. So we know that for each a from r there exists, maybe I write r from r, there exists a coefficients a0, a1, a n minus 1 from the field such that r in power n plus a1 n minus 1 r in power n minus 1 plus etc etc plus i 1 r plus i0 equals 0. So this element is algebraic. r is algebraic. And of course you may ask um, here the first problem is if every element is algebraic is algebraic then is R finite dimensional over the field? What is the question mark? And th the second question is if every R is algebraic of bounded degree degree then it is true the same that the algebra is finite dimensional and, and the other possibility is to replace algebraic with new so you have the first problem and the second problem replace algebraic with new and of course again and finitely dimensional with new potent so the question is if every element of the algebra is new is the algebra new potent or if every element is new potent is new of bounded degree is also the algebra new potent and the answers to these questions for the first question for the first question and also it's analog the answer is no and this is in a paper by Gold and Shafarevich in 1964. A good account of this paper can be found, for example, in the Christian book on non commutative algebras. It's interesting that they apply some numerical arguments. They choose the relations in such a way that the algebra is big enough to have, for each degree, to have non zero elements and at the same time to be every argument to be new. <laughs>